what's going on guys terribly tactical here today and uh, I want to talk about prepping uh, prepping is a big part of my life and I want to share it with you guys a lot of guys out there are preppers if you're in the gun community the gun culture at all uh, a lot of guys believe in it a lot of guys are doing it and uh, it's not because a lot of people are doing it that you should do it um, you should do it for the betterment of yourself and your family in case something ever does happen um, an economic collapse is more than likely to happen. I'm surprised it has not already. Um, but I want to talk about the basics, the basics of prepping. Uh, something to get you started if you've never thought about it, if you've never been into it, if you haven't started already, as well as give you maybe a couple more ideas. If you already have started, but you're just starting out, you don't really know exactly what you're doing or exactly what you need. Um, so this is more of a basic, broad overview across the board type of thing, uh, pun intended, and I'm just going to give you some quick bullet points, pun also intended, and uh, we'll dive right into it. So no matter what, if you're into firearms or, or prepping or you're just whatever, some random guy or girl to be PC about it, um, you've probably heard the term or the expression beans, bullets, band-aids, and these are the three main categories of prepping, but they also go across the spectrum to other things. If you're a combat troop, you need beans, bullets, and band-aids. You know, if you're just a regular person and you own firearms for defense, you know, you eat, you got beans, you got your firearms for defense, you got your bullets, and you probably have a medicine cabinet in your house, so there's your band-aids. So most people are already prepping and they don't even know it, you know? So it's not really like, you know, you see on doomsday preppers or anything crazy like that, um, which a lot of those guys have a lot of stuff going for them. But, you know, don't don't be scared off. Don't think that, you know, we're all like that and, you know, we're, we're bugging out all the time and we're just going crazy or that we're investing our entire life savings into these things, Um it wouldn't be a bad idea because you're always going to use these no matter what in just your average life. If nothing ever happened, you could use all of these. So that's the great thing about prepping. You're not dumping money into something that is never going to give you a return. You have a better likelihood of gaining on your investment, investing in these three categories, than you ever would in the stock market. So that's that. Um, we'll get into the first category here. Beans. Um, this is not just a can of beans. This is an all-encompassing category. And like I said, this is just a basic first look overview type of thing. So it's not going. I'm not going to get into every single little facet of every single category. I'll give you a couple examples and explain to you, you know, the uses, the purpose, and uh, drop a little knowledge. So... Beans. This could be anything from an actual can of beans, a 50-pound bag of rice, uh, gallons upon gallons of water, uh, water purification tablets, a way to boil water to purify it in case you run out of your store and or have not sto you know stored enough or didn't store any at all. Um, you know, dried meats, any type, any type of long-lasting foods. Um, you know, nuts, like some trail mix, um, stuff like that, mountain house meals, MREs. This is going to be, you know, e even vitamins, supplements um, to help add nutrition to your diet. Because if, if there's a collapse or there's anything going on and you're not able to go to the store and get your food, you're going to need to have some. You're going to need to have some that's going to help you um, add nutrition to your diet to keep you going to keep you functioning, to give you energy, so you can do the things you need to do, whether it be defend yourself, cut down a tree for firewood to stay warm, or just not die. Um, three days without water, on average, before you're dead. Three weeks, on average, without food, before you're dead. So obviously, water is a bigger part of this. It's a little bit more important. And in most scenarios, whether it be a natural disaster or a thing like that, for most of them, um, you'll be able to gain assistance or help yourself out of it in about a month. So if you had not a single thing to eat for a month, 
but you had water, you should be okay. You might lose a couple pounds, but hey, we probably all can. Um, or should, I, sh I should say. I know I do. Um, but yeah, this this is, again, a, all these are encompassing categories that have a lot within each one. Um, there's a lot of different options. You can do your own research, but I will bring more options uh, to the channel. I'm going to be doing more videos on this as well as other videos on other topics. Now that I picked up this whiteboard, it's going to help me kind of lay things out, give you guys a little bit of something to look at, maybe help you understand a little bit better rather than just looking at my ugly face talking at you. Um, so the beans, food, water, um, supplements, vitamins, stuff like that. Um, to keep you going, to keep you alive. We all need to eat. We all need to have water. So this is a very important part of that. Bullets. Okay. Most likely, if you're watching this channel, you own firearms and or are interested in owning firearms. Um, maybe not. Hope maybe I can convert a couple people. Um, bullets. Bullets are to a gun what gasoline is to a car and batteries are to a flashlight. You're not going to you're not going to go anywhere with a car that has no gas. You're not going to light up the darkness with a flashlight that has no batteries and you sure as hell are not going to light up a bad guy with a gun that has no bullets. So keep that in mind. Um a lot of us own a lot of guns, we're collectors, we're enthusiasts, whatever it may be. And uh that's great. It's always good, you know, two is one, one is none. Uh that's another very common um expression across the board, especially in prepping um, and, and combat stuff like that. Um, so it's good to have extras, but you need to have extras of these bullets, okay? Um, you could have 25 guns in your safe, but if you got three boxes of bullets, that's just dead weight. It's taking up space. It's not doing anything for you. And depending on what the situation is, and God forbid you ever do have to use them, those are going to go by like that real quick. Let me tell you. So you need to stock up on bullets. Uh, shout out to Matt from Never Enough Anal. Never Enough Anal. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm going to leave that in there. Never Enough Ammo. Um, Because that's just a great channel name. He's got a great channel over there. Go check him out. Um, tell him I sent you. Not that I'm anybody or that he'd know who I am, but... Um, you can never have enough ammo. You can never really have enough of any of these things, but the ammo, it goes by so quick if and when you use it. You're usually not using this, but if and when you need to, it's gone in an instant. So I recommend for the, for the bottom dollar basics, 500, or 500 rounds for every caliber that you own at all times. Now, there's a lot of different opinions on this a lot of people will say you should have 500 rounds for every firearm that you own or you know whatever it may be but if you have 500 rounds of 9 millimeter, 500 rounds of 556 500 rounds of 22 which obviously 22 is a lot cheaper you could probably have a lot more than that um, if you can find it but you should have at least 500 rounds in my opinion for the bare bones minimum um, for every caliber that you own, whether it be 940, 45, 762, 556, 308, whatever it is, that's the bare minimum. Obviously, more is always better. So if you can have more than that, you know, don't just get 500 and then stop. Um, and don't be afraid that, oh, that's a lot of ammunition. You know, I don't need all that or, or that's a lot of money. I'm telling you, what I do is every time I'm at Walmart, for whatever reason, a lot of the times, the only reason I go to Walmart is to buy ammunition. I don't really shop there other than that. But if I'm in there, you know, maybe getting an oil change or, you know, whatever it is. Every time I'm in there or anytime I'm anywhere that sells ammo, as long as the prices are reasonable and fair, I will pick up at least a box for something. Usually it's more than that, but at least one box every time I walk into a gun shop, into Walmart, Bass Pro, Dick's, Gander Mountain, wherever it is that I go... If I have the money to do so, I will pick up at least one box of ammo for whatever it may be. You know, 9, 40, 45, 5, 5, 6, 7, 6, 2, whatever it is. 12 gauge, you know, whatever it is. So if you do that, and again, say, and that principle can go along with all these things. If you get 
a couple cans of beans, a couple cans of corn, a couple, you know, a bag of rice, whatever it is. Every time you're you're somewhere, you're out grocery shopping, but you buy an extra one to set aside. Every time you go, you know, pick up a few band-aids, some gauze, a tourniquet. You know, not everywhere sells tourniquets and combat gauze and stuff like that. Um, so that's going to probably be more of an online thing. But if you're shopping on Amazon, add it to the cart. Um it's just simple principles, and you will see that over time, things will build up quite easily. And uh, it won't be an instant hurt on your bank account buying all of this at once as much as you can. Um, you have time. As of now, we have time to still do these things. If you've already been doing this for some years or even some months, you realize that it's, it's, it's harder than, it's not as hard as it looks or seems, excuse me. And uh, that's that. So another part of this is in order to fire the bullets, you need firearms. A lot of people have moral objections to owning firearms or to using them on other people. To each their own, but this is a God-given right, an inalienable right, a foundational right of this country and of its people. And I highly suggest you look into it. You know, you know you're not a bad guy. You know you're not going to use it in the in the wrong way. But... Are you going to let someone come into your house and rape or murder or hurt in any way your family or yourself because you don't want to hurt them in self-defense? To me, that's absolutely ridiculous, and it's, it, it blows me away how some people think that. You're going, to, you're going to be a martyr for your morals and watch your family get raped and murdered and slaughtered in front of you and have all your property taken from you? Now, obviously, material things are not nearly as, as worthy as human life. But in a situation like this that we're talking about, that we're prepping for, if you're in an economic collapse or any kind of collapse, these things could mean your life. If you don't have the beans or the medical equipment to take care of yourself, then you might die. Most likely, there's about a 99.9% .9 chance that you're going to die. Um, and you can't, you can have all of these beans and all the band aids in the world that you want, but if you don't have the bullets, to defend either of those things, it doesn't matter. You know, you can live three days without water, three weeks without food. Without bullets, God forbid it, you know, it ever happens. But if you get into a gunfight and you don't have bullets or anything to launch these bullets, you're not going to even last three seconds. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, again, this is all-encompassing bullets. The, the firearms they go to, um, things to maintain them, spare parts, cleaning kits, uh, extra magazines. You could put body armor in here, fatigues, you know, camo to help you blend in. Um, th these, these categories, again, are all encompassing. I'm saying this because this is a basic look, and uh, I'm not going to go over every single little facet of each category. I'll expand later in separate videos, but for right now, we're just giving you a, a short, quick look at everything to give you an idea, to get you started in case you have not already. So bullets, beans and bullets. Now we have band-aids and this is anything from your little Fred Flintstone or Barney or SpongeBob decorated band-aids all the way up to combat application tourniquets. Okay. This is another very important thing. This is going to be your painkillers, your actual little band-aids, your, your gauze, your ace bandages, your tourniquets, hydrogen peroxide, rubbing alcohol, um, all-encompassing, you know, chest seals, um, tension pneumo pneumothorax needles. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of things in band-aids, okay? This is another important part. These are all important. But what's important about these two, the bullets and the band-aids, okay, is training. It would behoove you to get some training in these two categories, okay? Um, if you don't have training in any sort or any type at all in these two categories, you could actually cause more damage than you do good. If you put a tourniquet on wrong or you leave it on too tight, the person or yourself could lose that limb. If you don't know how to properly handle firearms, you don't follow the four firearm safety rules 
and you know you're you're fixing things you don't know what you're fixing and you and you make it malfunction even more and then you get in a gunfight your gun doesn't work you get shot um if you don't know what you're doing you could make things a lot worse for yourself and your loved ones um so i highly recommend training there's a lot of great classes on both of these most you know most of them are kind of expensive if if you're in this realm you're talking about tactical response valor ridge haley strategic stuff like that um you know the cost of loot is stuff and they're all great and you know whoever you prefer go ahead and do it save up the money save up the ammo uh go take a class um but band-aids are really important and bullets are really important to have training on i've taken a few classes like nra basic pistol my concealed carry class um hunter safety class, stuff like that, and all that stuff is completely super basic. I knew everything they taught me before I went and, you know, walked through the door. I've been shooting since I was five, um, and that's not to sound cocky or anything, but they're, they're really basic classes. But, you know, the hunter safety was free, and they teach you about gun safety, and, you know, they, they teach you about hunting, which is a, is a great part um, of prepping because you're going to be able to procure food if you don't have enough stored, um, that class is free. Um, a lot of, uh, like the Red Cross will do first aid classes sometimes for free. You know, little seminars at, at schools or libraries or get CPR certified. A lot of time your job will offer that. Um, and it's free. You know, just knowledge is power. And the more that you have of it, the less you can get away with or the more you can get away with have with having less of these. You know, if you know how to find food or edibles in your area, if you run out of food or you didn't have enough or you you know you you didn't prepare at all, but you know how to survive in the wilderness, there's that. If you know how to fix your gun, maintain your gun, sight in your gun, use your gun properly, it'll help you a lot more on that. If you know how to pack a wound or put a tourniquet on properly, you know Things like that. If you know how to set a bone, knowledge is power. It cannot be taken away from you. Okay? So it, it's it's an amazing thing to have. And I highly suggest you take some classes. Doesn't matter who it's by, how basic they are, because if you don't know anything, anything's better than nothing. So take some classes. These two are really important to have knowledge on. The food as well, everything is, but the beans it's pretty easy. You know, you stock up your food, your rice, this, that, the MREs, the mountain house, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, whatever it is that you like to eat, you know, do your own research, look it out, you know, something with a long shelf life, whatever it may be. But you should know how to use your weapons and you should know how to plug your holes, you know, if someone else used theirs on you. Or, you know, it could be something as simple as you're cutting down a tree and you nick your leg with the chainsaw or you fall, you know, off a a ridge or, or down the stairs or whatever happens you need to set a bone you need to you know apply a tourniquet whatever it may be it's good to know how to do these things properly because if you do them wrong a lot of times you will make things worse um so this is just a, a well it's not that quick i suppose um but this is just a an overview uh touching on a few subjects within these categories the beans bullets band-aids um you know, remember that there's a lot that goes into each one of these, and they're all important in order to survive any type of collapse or even just regular life. You know, you lose your job, but you got a stockpile of food. You don't have to worry about putting food on the table for you or your family. You'll already have it. So that's useful in everyday life. Home invasions and robberies and, and rapes happen all the time. If you have firearms and you know how to use them, you can stop those things. You can save yourself and your loved ones. That It doesn't happen all the time, and I hope to God it never happens to me, my family, or any of you guys. But God forbid it ever does. That's a great reason to have this. That applies to everyday life. Band-Aids, like I mentioned earlier. We all have a medicine cabinet in our, in our bathroom. We got Band-Aids in there. We got maybe an ace bandage, you know, some painkillers, some allergy medicine. You're already prepared for those things to happen because you know that how easy it is for them to happen. And you're prepared to deal with them. So why don't we expand that a little bit into a broader category of more things that are just as easy to happen. 